Hey, this is Chris. Uh, now it's that time of year again when people are starting to think about tax. And we get a lot of questions from clients about how they can make sure that their investments are tax efficient. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about five very common and popular tax efficient investment strategies um, and the pros and cons of each of them. Um, obviously, before you make any investment decision and uh, thinking about it from a tax perspective, I would point out that you need to be talking to your accountant or your tax advisor uh, because Stockspot or any investment advisor for that matter um, isn't probably going to be able to be giving you tax advice. So the first popular tax efficient investment strategy is salary sacrificing into your super. Now this is a great long term strategy for boosting your super savings and there's a fantastic scheme in Australia that allows you to make uh, concessional super contributions in addition to what your employer is up to $25,000 a year. So it allows you to shovel more into super and get the tax benefits of super. Um, the big con of that is that obviously you can't touch that money for a long time. So you get the tax benefits a long way out in the future. If you're retiring many years away, you can't touch it for a while. So you do need to be considering what money you might need to be using soon and making sure that you're not actually contributing that to super because you won't be able to touch it. The next popular tax efficient investment strategy is buying a negatively geared property. Um, negative gearing is mentioned a lot in the property circles and what it basically means is losing money. It means every year your interest bill um, is higher than the rent you're earning from a property and you get to claim the difference between those two essentially off your income. Uh, so the big pro of this strategy, especially for people on high uh, marginal tax rates, is that it reduces your tax. Um, your personal income tax, the higher your marginal rate, the bigger impact that has. And that's why a lot of people on high marginal rates look at investment property as a tax efficient um, strategy. Um, the big con is all of the costs that property incurs every year. So whether it's your own personal property or investment property, there are a lot of costs and expenses you need to cover. Uh, we've written other blogs on this in the past and we'll put the links down below so you can read those. But ultimately you need to make up for the, all those costs in the capital returns and income you're earning from that property every year. And that's easier said than done. And so you wanna make sure you're buying the right sort of property that you can cover those expenses. The third popular tax efficient investment strategy is buying what's called investment bonds, or they're sometimes known as well as insurance bonds. Um, the reason you may not have heard of these before is actually they have become less and less popular over the last 20 years um, because they haven't really earned very good returns. And so what these things are, are essentially an investment product issued by an insurer where you are forced to save for 10 years. You're not allowed to take the money out for 10 years to get the tax benefit. And while the money is in there growing, it's taxed at the corporate rate rather than your personal rate. But then after 10 years, you get to pull out all of the money without paying any additional tax. Um, so it used to be a really popular strategy, again, similar to buying an investment property for people on high marginal rates. The biggest problem recently has been that a lot of these investment bonds charge extortionate fees. Uh, we did a big analysis, which we'll again put the link below on the best investment bonds and the worst investment bonds in Australia. But what we found was generally their fees are way too high. And even after you consider all those tax benefits, you're better off just plonking your money into index ETFs instead, which I'll get to soon. The fourth popular tax efficient investing strategy is buying high franking credit shares in Australia. Uh, now, um, a lot of Australian companies that are paying tax in Australia offer their shareholders, in addition to dividends, what's called a franking credit, which is basically them paying back the corporate tax they've already paid back to you, and then you just pay tax at your own marginal rate. Uh, very popular in Australia, especially for investors on low marginal tax rates, including retirees, because you can essentially get a cash rebate in addition to your dividends. Uh, the big con of this strategy is the lack of diversification. Uh, because if you're only investing in Australian companies that are paying high dividends, what it means is your investment strategy can be very focused in one country, which is Australia obviously, but also a few sectors of our economy, like banks and telecommunications. And it can really lead your investment returns to be at the whim of these sectors. Now sometimes they can perform well, but sometimes they can perform badly. And it really leads to a lot more a lot more volatility in your portfolio than you should have. And so our advice always to clients is don't focus only on high franking credit companies because you need to be looking at an overall total return perspective, including both the capital gains as well as the dividends and franking credits. And that takes me to the fifth 
and final tax efficient investment strategy, which is investing into low cost diversified ETFs. Um, there's a few reasons why ETFs are really tax efficient. Uh, one is the actual structure of an ETF itself. Uh, because they're not turning over the investments very often, like an active fund manager or if you were buying shares on your own, what it means is that a very little tax is realised within the fund every year. And so the fund itself is deferring tax further and further into the future. Um, but the other benefit of buying ETFs as a tax efficient strategy is that you are investing into the underlying companies and therefore if you're eligible to receive things like dividends and franking credits, these get passed on to you um, in a much more simple way than owning lots of individual shares. And so you get the tax benefit without all the cumbersome paperwork of having to deal with uh, franking credits from BHP and Woolies and Telstra and, and Westpac and all those other companies you might have owned individually in the past. Um, the big con of owning ETFs is that if you do own indi individual ETFs, you still have to do the paperwork on an individual ETF basis. And so a way that you can avoid this is obviously by using an automated service like Stockspot that combines all of the ETFs into a single tax document each year that summarizes your capital returns, that summarizes your dividends and your franking credits and all of the other tax components for you. And that's a summary of the five most popular tax efficient investment strategies that we hear about. Um, if you've got other tax efficient strategies that you've found to be successful, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below.